Hi everyone, my name is Mariel and I'm an alcoholic addict and I'm grateful to be here tonight. Um, the reason why um, I decided to share my story is the first time I'm ever asked to do it. And it came recently um, talking with my sponsor when it, it suddenly happened. I did it with her and she thought it was a good idea to do it with others. So I'm a little nervous, but here I am. Um, I think the how was it, what happened and what is it like now is very useful as a guide. So that's what I'll do. What was it like? Um, I think I was even, even took my first drink, I always felt uneasy. I never felt a sense of belonging, even within my relatives at school. I did all these different activities. I would join theater clubs. I would do math, mathematics and go to like the Olympics for all that, just trying to find the sense of belonging somewhere. Can you hear me? Yes, I, I, I stopped I think your I, video. I kind of lost. Yes, no, I stopped your video because we couldn't, but now we can. Okay. Um, basically, I felt unease, uh, like out of the womb. Um, there was something amiss. Um, in my sense of connection with other people. And I try to fill that void with so many things prior to alcohol. Um, I spent uh, most of my time in school, jumping from one group to the other and always finding something to, to flee. I didn't want to form like, I didn't feel capable of forming a strong connection with anyone really. And that led to a lot of isolation and feelings of inadequacy or, uh, later on when I got to college. Then suddenly um, I turned 21, my life turns upside down. I, was, I still haven't had a drink, but that sense of an ease hasn't left me yet. Um, I try to fill it with a good GPA. I try to like, I had a boyfriend, I was engaged. I had everything, quote unquote, a girl like me could want, but not, okay, now I'm here. Um, I, 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 was told, I was told I had everything I could want, but there was something amiss. And then one fateful night, I decided to try a drink for the first time. I felt so superior to everybody else because I was the type of person like, I don't drink, I don't do this, I am so untouchable. But I think deep down there was this fear that it would overcome me because I have seen alcoholism in my family. I, I, I am the child of, of an alcoholic. I am the granddaughter of an alcoholic. And I always treated with much caution, which, which looking back on it, it was a smart thing because once I started, it was like love at first sight. I had found my solution. I had found my place. I had found something that would grease up the engines, uh, the engines of me being able to be in a group and feeling cool. And suddenly everybody liked me. Suddenly I was hanging out with all the good, cool people and everybody invited me everywhere. Booze was free. And I started blacking out very, very, very early on. It wasn't gradual for me. Um, what was gradual was realizing that I had a problem. It's not that uh, I, I hear people um, say, well, I drank socially for a little while and then it got worse like way later. It got really bad really quick. And it took me like eight years to say, well, probably um, something's up. So first I started blaming um, this um, inability to control my drinking on the, on the drinks itself. First I said, oh, it's the champ champagne because it's too bubbly and it gets in my head. I'll not, I won't do that. Maybe it is um, the cocktails. That's, they, they have too many things in them. I'll try something else. And then I stuck with beer for a little while. And it's so incredible to find the same patterns and references in the big book. A big book that was written like 80 years ago or so. And people that go through the same pattern of thinking and behavior. 
So um, I, I did stop for brief periods of time saying like, no, you know what? I did this um, terrible thing because I was drunk and maybe I don't want to do that for a little while until, you know, I come to my senses and whatever, but it never stuck. And every time I drank again, I drank with more intensity. I mixed it with other stuff. I got in trouble with people. And the more I drank, the more isolated I became. I lost lifelong friendships because of it. I lost um, great job opportunities because of it. Not because they weren't offered, but because I wouldn't take them. I was just so consumed by it and the hardest part was like I was not even able to see that I was doing that I would blame my mom getting cancer and that's what took me off track and everything that happened in my life somehow was at fault anything but the alcohol anything but my disordered thinking and emotional state in general it was it was self delusional, but mostly was so self-centered. I was unable to see the consequences of my actions as something that I had a part in. It was always something external happening to me. So what happened? Well, I somehow got a good job that I loved doing and started, um, you know, doing the things that I was supposed to do, but I never felt content. I always felt like I needed more. Um, even either my boss wasn't good enough, the pay was not good enough, the hours weren't good enough, everything, nothing was good enough for me. So I decided to take a side job. And this side job, I crashed. I completely cra crashed. I decided I would take a dip in architecture, which is actually what I'm trained to do formally. And I simply could not do it. I simply could not do it because the, my, my partner at the time, my associate, um, basically ran out of the project and left me with um, all the hours. I was um, not the ideal person to work with to begin with. It's not like I'm putting the blame on him. It's just um, the situation I was in and I ended up having to work from 7.30 a.m. till 10.30 when my regular shift began and then finishing off my shift my shift at 7 p.m and then work all the way till 11 at night so i work from 7 a.m to 11 p.m as a consequence of being a mess i was a mess emotionally i was a mess mentally i would use on the job would um, um use file, uh, in the, not only on my day job, but also like the contractors, I would I would show up like hammered or out of my mind. And, you know, it, it's really easy. I think, you know, everybody talks about bottom, bottom, and I don't, what is the bottom? Like I was willing to go ahead and keep digging myself even deeper Every single day, there was nothing painful that was going to get me to stop um, because I was so used to it. And actually, one of the reasons that um, helped is actually uh, my bottom was this moment. I was sitting with a friend and just looking around and seeing that the, the day was beautiful and the sun was out. The park was green, everything was perfect, but I was unable to connect with anything around me. I knew it logically, but emotionally I was not there. My body was an empty husk that was not spiritually or mentally there. And around that time I had bumped into somebody that I didn't know he was doing a 12 step on me, but he was. He just sat next to me um, at a bar where I was miserable. He was not drinking. He was just moving around a Sprite with some soda. And he just started talking to me about um, this thing that he did that where he got his shit together. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I should try that. Maybe, maybe just maybe I should give it a go. 
So I did. I went to my first meeting that very same day I was sitting at the park and my life changed. My life changed because I arrived into a group of strangers that told me, we get it. We understand how you feel. We understand the pain you are under and we are going to love you. We are going to hear you sob and not cringe. We are going to hear you have a tantrum and understand. And we are also going to sponsor you. We are also going to be here for you. And this is something that really is really important for me because the meetings are a great place to come at a great start. But the real change, the real benefits of this whole 12-step program came after I started actually listening to a sponsor, actually in the steps, actually reading the literature, actually taking action towards a better life. Because at the beginning, I remember just being like, oh, um, okay, I will show up to meetings, but I won't do anything they tell, they, they suggest. Oh, I'll show up to meetings, but I won't call my sponsor for two weeks and that didn't work out. I relapsed on my fifth and my first attempt uh, on the fifth month. And that really served me to realize that I really knew I really needed to do this thing the way I was being told to do. So I got a sponsor, I started working the steps and slowly but surely it was not overnight. I have found a semblance of peace. And I say this because it's still like a very, um, very much a work in progress. I just turned one year and a half last week. And for me, it's like the biggest decision I have made in my entire life. Not my career choice, no my, my marital status, no my uh, economic situation, nothing nothing in my life has been as relevant as coming to AA and saying, hey, I don't know how to live. Please teach me. And teach me, um, I, have, I have been taught not in a sanctimonious way, not in a preachy way. People have taught me how to live by example. Um, people have told me how to be a person by example. I didn't higher power when I got here I was afraid to pray this is like my biggest um thing is a leftover from catholic school I was so afraid to pray because I was so afraid that God was gonna see me I was so so terrified of that and I that's why I got stuck for so long in step work and then when I read that Oh, subjectivity is allowed. I'm allowed to craft like my version of what a higher power is. It was such a relief because I was able to grant myself the space to believe and it's it was life changing. Right now I'm still working the steps, still trying to um, call a newcomer every single day. And you know, this is like pe the people counting days, you guys are the most important people here you keep me sober i remember coming um to a meeting for the first time and seeing people with three months like i thought like they were like the dalai lama because i know how they had done it i saw people with two months and they were the dalai lama because i didn't know how they did it and you guys remember me, how it was like, how emotionally and mentally wrecked I was when I walked into the rooms for the first time. Because I very easily forget. Um, once things start to get better, it's very easy to forget how it was. So I'm very thankful that I was asked to remember that um, by sharing this little bit of my story with you. And I think that's pretty much it. Anyone that wants to call me and you know, chat, any newcomer girls, um, I'll put my phone in the chat box and I'm more than happy to be of service. Thank you for letting me share.